Apple's hiding some secrets. Lots and lots of secrets. If you take a closer look at that Apple invitation that just went out, there is a lot we can learn about the seven new products that could potentially launch at this new October event. Oh, and the new iPhone 12 and 12 Pro, that's just one of the seven things we're expecting to see. And I'm gonna bet you don't know the other six. So first things first, let's get the obvious out of the way right now. High speed can mean a lot of things, including high speed, like the 5G connection that's supposed to be built into all the new iPhones, the LiDAR technology, the super blazing fast A14 Bionic. That's just kind of child's play at this point. We, we know that, that's simple. And if you wanna know everything you need to know about the new iPhones from the 12 Pro to the iPhone 12 mini and literally everything in between, you wanna check out our recap video up here and down below to learn about everything new coming to the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro series that we will see in less than a week at this point. But Apple's got some other secrets up their sleeves and there's a whole lot of other things we're expecting to see at this new upcoming October event. So let's talk a little bit about number two, that's AirTags. Now, the amount of coverage we have heard about these unreleased Apple products would make you think that they've been out for a while at this point. We have heard so much about AirTags. Apple themselves have even sort of leaked it already. And if you take a look at the event invitation, am I the only one that thinks the Apple logo in the center of the invitation looks very, very familiar, kind of like the AirTags concept we saw from John Prosser and concept creator just a few weeks ago? Coincidence? I don't know if Apple would hide anything like that in plain sight, but I really wouldn't put it past them. But there is a lot to talk about with AirTags, specifically really two things and what makes them unique. Their feature set, what they can do, and more importantly, probably their price. So on first glance, AirTags kind of seem like this tile knockoff, ripoff competitor that essentially just tracks your stuff. You put it in your wallet, your backpack, your purse, your briefcase, whatever you happen to be traveling with, and you basically now have peace of mind that wherever that item is, it'll automatically be tracked. You can track it on your iPhone, your different iOS devices, your Mac, all that stuff. A tracker makes total sense and isn't really a big deal. But what is a big deal is this rumored community find feature that could really set AirTags and Apple apart from what the rest of the competition, specifically Tile, is doing. That's because the rumor is that this community find feature with AirTags would leverage the power of the entire Apple ecosystem. iPads, Apple Watches, iPhones, Macs, basically any Apple device that is near an AirTag is able to communicate with that device and share its location. So let's say for example, you're at a coffee shop, you happen to leave your wallet on the table, your wallet drops uh, out of your pocket and lands on the floor and you leave without noticing it and you wanna go back later and see where to go. Maybe you went to a couple of different places that day and you just don't know where it is and you wanna track it down. But maybe there's someone at a table nearby with an iPad or an iPhone or maybe just an Apple Watch and essentially the AirTag is able to communicate with those other Apple devices around it to automatically get its location wherever it is. Even if maybe it moves throughout the building, someone picks it up and takes it somewhere else, it's able to leverage the power of the Apple ecosystem to be able to give you a pinpoint location of exactly where your AirTag is. Tile does something similar with the Tile community and the community find feature, but in that case, you have to have the Tile app on your phone and be a Tile user, which is a large number of people, but not nearly as large as the number of people who own Apple products and iPhones and iPads, Macs, hundreds of millions of these devices are all over the world. This is an incredible amount of devices you can leverage to make a really cool feature for AirTags and make them a must have thing that you gotta have to track your stuff. Of course, the other big mystery here is price. Could AirTags be, you know, very affordable at like 10 bucks a pop, maybe $20, a pop? Could there be this, you know, kind of rumored bundle of maybe three for 50? We don't exactly know what the price of these would be, though I do think the price of AirTags is either going to contribute to the rise of AirTags or the fall of AirTags. Price is gonna be very important. For example, you can go buy two Tile Pros from the Tile website for a hundred bucks. So maybe two for a hundred is not outrageous to think. Again, this is Apple and they do pricing differently, but I do think pricing is gonna be very important. It's gonna be, you know, whatever happens to be really cool to see. And I'm hopeful and I'm optimistic that AirTags could really be a, a sort of shakeup to the tracker industry. We kind of saw Apple do this with AirPods a few years ago. It'd be cool for AirTags to do the same thing. I'm not totally sold on a tracker, but this could be a thing like AirPods. One of those things that once you see it, you gotta have it.
Next up, AirPod Studio. This has been another long lasting rumor that we've heard that Apple is working on a premium pair of over the ear headphones for years, but now there's some physical evidence in a sense to kind of back this up and make this rumor a little bit more tangible. We saw some recent leaks from John Prosser who had some insider information and showed off what these uh, alleged AirPod Studio look like. But we've also just learned that Apple will stop selling any uh, competing headphones or speakers in their Apple retail stores and presumably online, which leads to a very interesting question. And for many to assume that, yeah, Apple is probably now working on their own over the year headphones. Welcome, AirPod Studio. Now, the idea behind AirPod Studio actually make a lot of sense. They'd essentially sit above the AirPods Pro in kind of the same line, but they would deliver this premium audio experience in these over the year headphones that bring a lot of the magic from AirPods up to over the ear headphones. So they'd be super easy to pair and connect. They have excellent battery life. There'd not be a lot of physical toggles and buttons and switches. They would just kind of ditch all that. Uh, they'd have hopefully a nice case and they'd be portable and easy to carry around. And I think there's a lot of um, opportunity for AirPods Pro to really grow in this space. Uh, for example, I love what Sony and Bose are doing with noise canceling headphones. They're comfortable. Uh, the noise cancellation technology in there is really good. Um, you know, they sound really good. Uh, they're great, but they are a little cumbersome. There's a lot of controls and dials and gestures I just don't remember. And they all need like their own app you have to create an account for and have to log into and then uh, update the software and then, you know, get everything set up that way. There's a real opportunity here for Apple to bring a little bit of that Apple magic into AirPod Studio and make over the ear headphones a little more Apple-esque, a little more simple and easy to use. And I'll just say, I think what Apple is doing with AirPods Pro, if that's any indication, they're doing a really good job. I know that for a lot of people, it doesn't have the sound fidelity and the audio quality that many would want, but noise cancellation is excellent. If you've ever tried the new uh, spatial audio feature, it is mind-blowingly cool. That comes from someone who usually isn't wowed by stuff like this. It's really, really cool. And uh, it'd be really cool to see them take that technology, what they've learned from AirPods and AirPods Pro, even what they've learned from the HomePod and that audio science and audio technology, bring those to a super premium over-the-ear headphone, it uh, seems like a match made in heaven, all this stuff coming together, and could be a super cool product that many people would really love. But like always, there are a couple of lingering questions that need answers. Uh, will they come in multiple model versions? What will the price be? And most importantly for many, will it have a headphone jack? Uh, in terms of SKU, we've seen there's a rumored uh, version of AirPods Studio that's an AirPods Studio Sport Edition. Maybe there's an AirPods Sport and AirPods Studio. Not exactly sure what the lineup could be. The rumored price tag for them is 350, so maybe there's a $300 model, a 350 model. Maybe it's like the Apple Watch. There's like more premium variants and less premium variants depending on maybe the finish and the padding and the design and stuff like that. We're not exactly sure. We know for sure there is one version. We don't know if there are multiple. Uh, and in terms of the headphone jack. I'm not gonna be the least bit surprised that these do not have a headphone jack. Apple obviously is notoriously not afraid to take it from their phones. Uh, I don't think these will have them though. I'd be happy to be proven wrong. And right in line with this rumor is the next product we could see. This new HomePod mini, again, rumored for a while. We had kind of heard Apple was going back and forth on this. Uh, we know for the, all the people that bought HomePods, they really love them. I know multiple people who bought HomePods, love them so much they bought more. Uh, but there have been a couple of prevailing issues with HomePod. Uh, Siri is a sticking point and the price was a sticking point. And also some of the limitations that went with them. Uh, a lot of those issues have been kind of fixed over the years. Siri has gotten better. The HomePod has been less restricted now allowing for Spotify. They're on sale all the time, uh, but the price premium you have to pay for them is still currently a, a bit too high for many people, and a lot of people would love to see that price come down. Enter the new HomePod Mini that's supposed to fix those issues. It would bring some of the best parts of HomePod down to a smaller, more affordable size. You could maybe put together a real kind of cool whole house audio system where you could have a HomePod Mini uh, in one room, a HomePod Mini in the other. Kind of what you can do with HomePod now, but the smaller they are, the cheaper they are, the more accessible they are, the more you could get in theory, which would make them kind of cool. Uh, and they'd be able to sound really great and they'd be able to offer a lot uh, and they'd be at a cheaper price. You do still have the Siri problem, which is slowly getting better, but it's getting there. Obviously there's some home, smart home compatibility worries there. Obviously Apple has HomeKit, uh, more and more stuff is kind of working together, though a lot of stuff is still uh, locked to uh, 
Amazon's ecosystem and the Google Assistant ecosystem. Also, in some cases, Amazon and Google are quite literally giving these things away to people. They're so cheap. Uh, so I do think Apple needs to really compete on price with the HomePod Mini to make it successful. Uh, it'd be cool to see this. A hundred bucks would be a really great uh, price for the HomePod Mini. I'd be super interested in checking it out. Again, a lot of people love the HomePod and the HomePod technology and what Apple has done. It's just too expensive. Hopefully that could make this price more attainable and make the HomePod Mini more accessible to much more people around the world. Next up, Apple TV, another product that has uh, been in a little bit of a need for an update. We heard that Apple is working on an update and this could be the event we finally see a new Apple TV. But now there's a twist to this story. So obviously the Apple TV, Apple continues to push their original programming. They make deals with other content providers. It makes sense for an Apple TV to come out with a bit of a, a faster processor. Many have long wanted a new redesigned remote, which is supposedly in the works and coming soon. All that makes total sense. But what we've heard recently is that there's a, a new addition to this, is that there's gonna be two possible variants of the uh, Apple TV, uh, some equipped with an A12 processor and some equipped with some variant of the A14 processor, which begs the question, why does an Apple TV, a, a streaming set-top box, need so much power? And the answer to that is Apple Arcade, supposedly. Uh, rumor has it that Apple is pouring a bunch of money into the development of original games for Apple Arcade. This is Apple's game streaming service that launched a couple of months ago. Apple is also rumored to be working on their own game controller for the Apple TV as well, so you could play games with this new custom Apple-designed, Apple-made controller for the Apple TV. That would be super cool. Uh, all this seems exciting. I mean, Apple obviously wants people to like Apple Arcade. They're putting a lot of money into it, uh, and this would be kind of a, a great way to really take advantage of the best that Apple Arcade has to offer. We've heard these rumors for a while now. The Apple TV is in need of an update, so we could see it as soon as less than a week from now at this October event. Next up, Apple talks about speed in this invitation. They make a point of kind of proclaiming speed is a big theme of this event, which makes many think we could finally see the first Apple Silicon Mac make its debut at this October event. Don't know if it's a MacBook Pro or maybe a Mac Pro, probably not an iMac, but a lot of people think the MacBook, that original thin, fanless, uh, kind of lower powered Mac uh, could make its return equipped with an Apple Silicon processor inside. This makes a lot of sense because the computer Apple wanted to make when they made the MacBook a few years ago, they really just couldn't do with those mobile Intel chips that they now could do with the A14 line, presumably with their own Apple Silicon. Fanless, super thin, very efficient, great battery life, even some good processing power in there as well. The MacBook makes so much sense to be the first Apple Silicon Mac we could see. Maybe we could see some kind of redesign. Maybe this is the opportunity for Apple to usher in the new era of MacBook design with maybe Face ID built in somehow. Maybe that new, you know, obviously the refined keyboard making its way from the different models. Uh, maybe we see some kind of design change that kind of, uh, again, you know, brings in this new era of Apple laptops with this Apple Silicon. We're not sure exactly what we could see, but this is one that seems to be uh, a prevailing theory that we could actually see the first Silicon Mac make its debut at this event. If we're talking about speed, we're talking about performance, the iPhones have it, uh, the iPad Air has it, uh, more Apple devices are getting it, and it just makes sense. We want to see that speed and performance in this new Apple Mac. The MacBook with the new uh, A14 processor makes a whole lot of sense, and I'd really love to see it. And last up, our kind of Hail Mary, our final product that some think we could possibly see, but probably not, is some kind of new iPad Pro. We know Apple is working on supposedly a new version of the Magic Keyboard case. We know that Apple is working, has been working for a while now on mini LED technology for uh, the screens of the iPad Pro. Obviously, many want an A13Z chip or some kind of A14 chip in the iPad Pro as well, updated cameras. We're not exactly sure when we could see this. There's a chance, there's a chance, always a chance, we could see this at this October event, but I don't think it's very likely, though I'm not gonna give up all hope just yet. There is a chance, obviously, we could see this new iPad Pro, uh, again, with a new chip, with a new display, some new uh, refined uh, features and specs inside. It could make its debut at this event, though. For that one, I wouldn't hold my breath. 
So what do you guys think? Of those seven items we could potentially see, what is the product you are most excited for? You really want a nice pair of AirPods Studio? Have you been waiting for AirTags forever? Or iPhone 12 Pro, just give me my iPhone 12 Pro. What do you guys think? Leave those in the comments down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the Apple Circle also if you haven't already. We will have your full coverage of Apple Event Day and everything that they introduce uh, there and beyond. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching as always. I'm Robert Rosenfeld and I will see you in the next one.